Hello, beautiful, beautiful people. Uh, welcome to another episode of Not Your Average PK. I am, of course, your host, Carissa Hope Matera, and I am Not Your Average PK. So I'm so excited to dive into a new episode today. And before I tell you what it is, I just want to give a little bit of a backstory on why. Um, last month, I'm recording this in March right now, pretty much like one of the last days of March. But last month was February, and a lot of things came up about Valentine's Day, and there were so many posts about um, people who are in relationships versus people who are single, and lots of loneliness surrounding that, and lots of talk about relationships, about how to have a healthy relationship, about how to get into a relationship, how to, you know, persevere in one. And not a lot of talk about the beauty of singleness and the gift in singleness. And often we don't find singleness to be seen as a gift. We only find being married or being in a relationship to be seen as a blessing or a gift. And so today I just kind of want to dive in to talk about singleness as a gift, singleness as a blessing. And let me just preface, preface, why can I say that word? (laughs) Let me just say, um, just to give you a little bit of background for me, just to say that I actually am not single. I am in a relationship, have been in a relationship for six years now. Uh, We're not married, but we've been dating for a while. We started dating young when we were still teenagers. So that's that's how some people are kind of like, how have you been able to date for six years? And like, you're not, you know, that old. We started dating when we were pretty young. Um, But coming from someone who is not single, I wanted to give you the backside of being in relationship and the blessing part of being in single. Not to say that I wish that I was single or anything like that. I I don't wish to be in any other position than the one that God has put me in right now, which is kind of the point of what I want to talk about, that if you are single right now, that you should see that as a blessing as well. Whichever stage of life or season that you're in, you should not wish to be in a different one. Um, and that there are blessings in every single season that you are in. But specifically want to talk about uh, the blessings involved in being single coming from someone who is not single. So this is not just your regular person kind of like justifying like, oh, you know, I'm happy. You kind of see it as fake when someone who's single is telling you why being single is the greatest thing in the world. You're like, oh, they're just chatting. They just, you know, are trying to make themselves feel better, which is not always fair. It's not always true. However, I thought it might be just more genuine coming from somebody who's actually not single to talk about the great things about someone who is in a season of singleness and talk about the realities of being in a relationship because we only hear the great things and people think like all my problems will be solved once I'm in a relationship, once I'm married, all these things, which is uh, just not true. In fact, being in relationship significantly complicates your life, I would say. Not to say it's not a blessing. It is. Like I said, I love being in a relationship. Um, I love my partner. He's awesome. And But we're not really going to focus on that. We are going to focus on why, if you are single, you should be appreciating the beauty of your singleness. And here's why. When you are single, even Paul in the Bible, he was single, and I believe that he counted it as a blessing because he was able to do more for God. He was able to have more freedom than he would if he were to be married with children. And I think that we should, those of us who are single, should view it from his standpoint of, okay, let me see what are the benefits of me not being in a relationship right now. And one of them is that you are more independent and you do have more freedom um, because being in a relationship is in fact a sacrifice. 
And being married is, in fact, even more of a sacrifice, even though I feel like in today's culture, we kind of just view marriage as just the same as being in a relationship. And it's just not. It is a holy covenant between you, you, the person you're marrying, and God. And um, anyways, we'll get back into that in a little bit. When you are single, you have a lot more time to be able to go after the things that God has put on your heart. You have a lot more energy. You have a lot more freedom. Um, You have more say over your schedule as well. You don't need to check in with a partner to see whether or not you can do something for the sake of work, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of any type of ministry that you're in. Um, The reality is that you are less tied down. And I don't mean that in the way that culture means it, less tied down to be able to do whatever you want with whoever you want and hook up with whoever. That is not a part of the beauty of being single. Um, It is not so that you can just do random hookups all the time. I don't believe that that will make you feel fulfilled. I don't believe that that will make you happy. But I do believe that there are some things about being single that you can do that will make you feel fulfilled and satisfied in your singleness. Uh, First of all, just because you're single doesn't mean you have to be lonely. You're going to have tons and tons of friends and family who love you. The it Being in a relationship is not the only way to be loved. It is not the only way to be cared for. And I think that's where we make a mistake as a culture and a society. We think that having a partner that we're in a relationship with is the only way that we can be taken care of. It's the only way that someone will truly, truly love us and care for us. And that's just not true. There are friends to fill different needs in our lives. There are family members to fill various needs in our lives. Having a partner does fill a different need in your life, but that doesn't mean that that's the only way for you to be fulfilled. And um, I just want to encourage those who are feeling lonely. Guess what? When you're in a relationship, you probably won't see your friends as much. You probably won't hang out with people as much. Your schedule is not as free. You probably won't be able to do as many activities. You won't be able to probably dedicate as much time with work or with church or the different things that you have going on with your life, even with family members. You know, that dynamic changes a lot when you're no longer single as well. You know, you don't you can't just drop of a hat, do something for any family member whenever they need it because you have another person to tend for and to consult with. And so the season that you are single, I just want to encourage you to lean into those moments and use them where God has given you this blessing of having more freedom uh, because it is a blessing. And so be able to have more connections with your friends you know be content in being able to have more quality time with certain people with certain family members uh and even just savoring those best friendships like coming from a girl having a best friend who's a girl that does change when you are no longer single because now your best friend becomes the person that you're in a relationship with And it's just different. It doesn't mean that you don't have friends anymore, but it is different. So I'm saying savor those moments in which you are in a season where you can look at everything as a blessing. Singleness not aside, you know? And that's the point of this episode today is to be able to recognize those blessings that are in singleness and really savor them, lean into them more. Um, And so. Yeah, when you're when you're no longer when you're single and you're a girl, your girlfriends are like this. You have sleepovers with your best friend all the time. You share everything together. You know, it's just it changes a little bit when you're in 
a relationship and that's okay. But again, I want you to be able to savor those moments that are very special and have been given to you in this specific season. And um, even like I was sharing before with Paul, he would have not been able to do all the things that he did for God had he been married with a family. He even says that. And so even in your work life, you know, before you're making that switch, take advantage of the time that you have, the extra time that you have, because when you're in a relationship, you, you no longer have that extra time. All your extra time goes toward quality time with your significant other, not quality time necessarily with yourself, with your uh, <clears throat> other friends or whatever, um, or even with sometimes with your goals. Um, so the time that you do have that freedom and that wiggle room, take advantage of it. And here's another reason why. So say you're married, whatever, maybe in your 20s, 30s, or something like that, or you're in a relationship, you can assume then for, hopefully, <laughs> for the rest of your life, which would be the majority part of your life, that you will be in a relationship, you will be married. And so actually, the minority part of your life is the one in which you are single, so you have an entire majority lifetime ahead of you to be in a relationship, be committed to someone else, which is great, but you don't have that much time to not be committed to someone else in that way. So that's why I'm saying you should take advantage of it if you are single now to use that opportunity to do things that you wouldn't have necessarily been able to have the time for later on down the road in the future or when you were with somebody and that way you can probably more easily recognize it uh if you're no longer in a relationship but yeah so like even for like i was saying your work life your church life serving in a church you know like leading some kind of group with people uh even being in something like a book club or you know having quality hangout time with your girls or with your guy friends like trust me guys <laughs> if you are able to just like play hours of video games every single night like Fortnite with your friends whatever that will not be the case when you're in a relationship <laughs> because your time is no longer just your own your time is shared with somebody else even if you're not married your time is still shared with somebody else and that's the point i'm getting at is count it as a blessing right now because there are blessings in your season that you're in that your time is your own obviously it's god's ultimately but it's not shared between you god and somebody else it's uh between you and god right now which there's a lot of potential there there's a lot of opportunity there so see it as potential see it as opportunity see it as blessing look at it with this optimistic, hopeful view of the things that God can use this freedom to do in your life. And it's beautiful. It's awesome. Um, and now just taking a step further into marriage, uh, which obviously I'm not married. So I'm not qualified to really talk about it. But what I do feel like I can share about is um, maybe the reasoning behind why you should rush into marriage as somebody who has not rushed into it, speaking from experience. And seeing a lot of people who are my peers kind of rush into it and not really truly de think deeply about the commitment and what marriage truly means even in a spiritual sense not just you know the practical sense of sharing a home and having a wedding and all that but truly deeply in a spiritual mental emotional sense of what it means to be married to somebody else because when i see people rushing into it 
are just wanting to be married. They just want to be a wife. They just want to be a husband, which is okay. Like if you believe that that desire has been given to you from God, which I, I do think that uh, it is, then that's okay. Like to have those desires and dreams and everything. But if that is the sole reason why you are getting married and you have not truly delve deep into what it means then I think that's where it becomes a little bit murky on whether or not you should be getting married um and so marriage it's crazy so a lot of people ask me you know like why aren't you married yet you guys have been dating for a long time and there's probably a lot of reasons some more practical than others one being money. <laughs> we live in New York City. Rent is not cheap. Living here is not cheap. It's very expensive. Um, and just in our current season of life, of where we are at financially and um, job-wise, it wouldn't be practical. And it really it wouldn't be a good time, <laughs> purely because of those things. Um, you know, we'd really have to be slumming it. And, um, we of course know that we are going to get married, would love to be married. And we are committed to each other to be married at some point when God wills it to happen. However, you know, people have often told us, just do it. Like, what are you waiting for? Just like, just do it already. And it's like, well, marriage is not really something that you just do just because you have to it's the next step like you just need to hurry up and do it and I've heard a lot of people talking about timelines of like oh I need to be getting engaged or married after dating someone for this amount of time like one year two years three years whatever they have like a, a year timeline plan for marriage and I just don't think that's okay because you should not be going based off of your own timeline or your own predetermined timeline, whatever, you should be going off of your spiritual timeline. And that one I think is God ordained um, based off of where you are in your walk with God, where you are in your journey with this other person. Uh, because even though time passes, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are maturing in that process as a person or as a couple. And I've seen that a lot. And um, I truly don't think that it should be something that's rushed or just dove into just for the sake of a timeline, just for the sake of it's been this amount of time. That doesn't mean anything unless if. God has also brought you through and his divine timeline is matching up with your physical timeline, if that makes sense. It's a little complicated. This is where we get a little bit complicated and complex. So bear with me because I'm kind of working through these thoughts as well with you together, which makes it fun. Um, and so... What marriage is truly is not just a wedding. It's not just picking out what you want for your apartment. It's not just living together, sharing a bed, anything like that. <clears throat> marriage is a covenant between you and this other person and God, and it's sealed by God. And it is literally and spiritually God making you one flesh with another person. You two are not two people anymore. You are one flesh and becoming a new person, a new creation. Are you ready to lose yourself, sacrifice yourself to become one person with somebody else? And truly, I don't think the majority of the people who get married are ready for that, which is why it's so easy for them to leave it behind, to get a divorce, to move on, whatever, because they did not examine 
the deep spiritual implications of what marriage means and what marriage is because God defined marriage. And so this is what it is purely by definition in a factual sense. The state did not create marriage, you know. Marriage has been around since God created it, which is way before any of our time. Um, and are you ready to really take your what was a relationship of two individuals to make not just a new relationship, but become a new person? That is literally, boom, becoming one with somebody else. That is a sacrifice. That is a losing of yourself, a losing of what you knew as your independence to walk in a completely new journey, not with somebody else, but as somebody else that you guys are walking through together, of course. Um, and it's not something that should be just torn apart like that with, you know, people think I can get married. It's no big deal because it doesn't work out. We have a prenup. I'll just get a divorce. Do you understand the spiritual implications of getting a divorce? You are now one person. Imagine this. And now somebody has to surgically remove and rip you apart from your other half. You don't just become like one whole person again. It's traumatizing the same way that a physical surgery would be traumatizing because that's literally what it is and what is happening to you spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. And so if you are not thinking of the divine aspects of marriage, if you are not thinking deeply about the sacrificial aspect of marriage, you should not be getting married. It is not it is a blessing to be married and to have a family, of course. <clears throat> God blesses it and blesses those who bear fruit and multiply. However, if you are not ready for also not just the blessings of that portion of your life, but the sacrificial aspect of it, then you shouldn't be doing it right now. Which is why it baffles me when other Christians talk about marriage so so much without reverence you know of like what are you waiting for just do it whatever you should never ever rush someone into a marriage because because of the depth that it truly means um so yeah it, it really just baffles me and i think the people that do get married so young and rushed and whatever i wonder have they have they counted the cost? Have they counted the cost of what it means to be married? In the same way, of course, have you know that Christians count their costs when uh, they decide to follow Jesus with their whole heart? Um, but as in the same way, there is, of course, a life full of blessings. But you're never the same. You are a new person. You're a new creation. And are you ready for that? Because if you choose to walk away, you're so much worse off. And so, yeah, I just want to encourage you, don't get caught up in the hype and the cultural ph phenomenon and whatever to just be in a relationship for the sake of being in a relationship, just to get married for the sake of saying you're married, to have to save face or whatever. But truly examine what it means deeply on a deep emotional, spiritual level to be with somebody else. And once you have, if you're ready for it, amazing. I think that you'll have a, an amazing life together, amazing journey. It's going to be hard, of course. Uh, there are blessings in that season, but just as there are blessings in your walk of singleness. And I think that will be honored as well. Um, and obviously God sees our heart. He sees 
our motives. And so it will not be kept secret if our motives are not pure in being in a relationship or being in a marriage. And so I do think that it's safe to be single until you are ready for everything else. And I just want to encourage you that it doesn't have to be, when you're single, it doesn't have to be a season of loneliness. It doesn't have to be a season of wanting what you can't have or of despair or of, you know, hating other couples. It can be a beautiful, blessed season of freedom, of friendship of family, of quality time, of personal growth, which is so important before you get into a relationship. It is so much harder to get to a certain level of personal growth while you're in a relationship because you're not just concerned with your growth, you're concerned with other persons now as well. So it's so much harder to make that progress because you're now, it's like that game where you're like, locked arms and legs and you have to and it's a race and you you know you and your partner have to go the same speed in order to get there it's the same thing so i would say set a boundary for yourself if you are single of where you would like to um, be in your personal growth or a personal walk with god if you are a christian uh and set that boundary of I'm not going to get a really get into a relationship until I am comfortable with this x y and z or whatever uh because it is difficult then afterwards if you haven't thought that through first it's possible of course like through God anything can happen and um I believe with enough hard work and determination it is however it doesn't have to be that hard <laughs> we make it harder than it has to be sometimes and it is a lot easier to focus on your own personal growth and games and uh acquisitions and even school of like <laughs> Uh, getting good grades and everything like that when you're able to be more focused and so I would say lock in on that season where you can be ultra ultra focused because things can happen a lot quicker this way and count it as a blessing don't count it as a loss don't count it as don't write it off as just a season of loneliness and like of you know bitterness and uh, just waiting don't be waiting for somebody to show up. Be focused on your own life, your own walk, your own journey. And along the way, maybe somebody will come who is in a similar stage of life as you, which is important, I believe, also to be in similar stages. Um, but don't just be waiting around and searching and using up all of your time and energy that you have looking for this person take advantage of the time that you have without the person first and i believe that you'll see so much growth so many blessings that you'll see so much fruit come out of this new perspective uh, but that's a wrap for today i hope that this was helpful fruitful for a lot of people who are just feeling down about their season of singleness. And I hope that you can see it as a blessing after this. Thank you so much. I literally love you all. If you're here, you are already loved. This is a community. This is not just a podcast. And so I would love to get to know all of you all who are listening or watching and just know that I am here for you. I want to be here to serve you completely. And um, so if you have any thoughts, any comments, questions, or even topics that you want talked about, let me know. And I'm here for you. Goodbye, beautiful people. Have an amazing rest of your day and an amazing week. I love you all.